So for this video, we're going to be applying the differentiation rules that we learned in the last video. So we're going to be doing three different examples. But first, you probably need to know these common derivatives, which might also appear in your exams. So I'd say that these derivatives are very important. So first, these two are the common trigonometric derivatives. So again, if you take the derivative of sine x, you end up with cosine x. The derivative of cosine x, you end up with negative sine x. And then you have these ones, which are the exponential derivatives. If you take the derivative of e to the x, e being Euler's number, you just end up with the same thing. So also e to the x. And then if you take the derivative of a to the x, where a is any constant number, you end up with a to the x multiplied by ln a. Okay. And finally, we have the logarithmic derivative, which is taking the derivative of ln x would lead to 1 over x. So let's get started on the examples. Okay, our first example for today is sine x multiplied by cosine x. So pause the video now, then come back when you think you're ready. Okay, so let's try doing this together. The first thing that you notice is these two are actually two functions being multiplied by each other, right? So we can treat sine x as our f of x and cosine x as our g of x. <clears throat> and if you remember, this actually perfectly translates to our product rule, which states that the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function plus the derivative of the second function, okay, multiplied by the first function is the derivative for this function, okay? So let's try solving that. The derivative of sine x, according to our list earlier, is cosine x. Then you multiply that with the original second function, which is also cosine x. And then... For this second term here, we want to take the derivative of this second function, g of x. So the derivative of cosine x is actually negative sine x. Then you multiply that with your first function, sine x. <clears throat> and finally, you obtain cosine squared x minus... Oops. Okay, I don't know where tan, tan came from. <laughs> minus sine squared x. And this is your final derivative for this example. And for this one, we used product rule. Okay. So for our second example, we want to take the derivative of e to the quantity 4x squared minus 3. So you can pause the video here, try to figure it out, and then come back. Okay. So, as you can see here, this is actually a composite function. Why? The first outer function is actually just an e to the x. But what if instead of you raising it to an x, we input instead another function, g of x, okay, which is just 4x squared minus 3. So in essence, this is a function inside a function. Because it's e raised to, instead of x, it's raised to 4x squared minus 3. Okay, so knowing that it's a composite function, we know that the rule that we're supposed to use is the chain rule. Okay, so how do we apply chain rule to this? First recall that chain rule is the derivative of the outer function, okay, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. And so, knowing that information, we can take the derivative of e to the 4x squared minus 3, or the outer function, which is just itself, right? e to the 4x squared minus 3. Why is it itself? Because if you refer to the first page I showed you earlier, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Now, you multiply this by the inner function, which is this quantity on top, and so, for the first term, you want to use power rule, where we bring down this 2 here, and we minus 1, right? So that is for our first term. So, knowing that, 
we multiply this by 8x raised to 1. And the second term here is just a constant. So that's just minus 0. And finally, our answer would be 8x multiplied by e to the 4x squared minus 3. So using chain rule, power rule, we get this derivative as the derivative of this function. This one is our third and final example. So pause the video, then again, come back when you think you're ready. Okay, this one is quite obviously a fraction, so it's pretty obvious that it wants us to use quotient rule, right? And we recall the quotient rule is when you take the derivative of two functions where uh, it's f of x divided by g of x, you end up with, first in the numerator, okay, you copy the low function, then you multiply that by the derivative of the high function, okay, derivative of the high function, minus the high function multiplied by the derivative of the low function, all over the low function, all squared. Okay, so we're going to be using the quotient rule in order to solve this derivative. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of the high function. So again, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Okay, now 1 over x multiplied with the low function, 5 to the x, minus the derivative of the low function, which again, according to the list I gave you earlier, is 5 to the x multiplied by ln 5. Okay, And this whole thing, we just copy this thing on top here, which is ln x. And that already is our numerator. Okay, And our denominator is simply the low function. So that's 5 to the x all squared. And that's literally it. So you can leave your answer like this, or again, you can use algebra to simplify it, but this is essentially the derivative of this function using quotient rule.